We're doing a color review on a Ferron Ball color. Thought that would look a lot cooler. This is a paint color with a name that couldn't be any more vague. It's called off-white, which is true, but the real question is how off is it? I'm giving you my detailed thoughts on this paint color and also attempt to create a color palette with three other Ferron Ball paint colors, as well as two trim options you can use for your baseboards, doors, and frames. Honestly, putting together color palettes is one of my favorite things to do, so you don't wanna miss this one. Now, one important distinction I wanna make right off the bat, don't confuse this color for white because it isn't. The off and off white is no joke. And I think the description on the Pharaoh Ball website does a much better job at describing it, which is a chalky mid-tone. I would still say it's in the upper half lightness wise of all paint colors, but to be completely honest, I don't quite know exactly how light or dark it is because for my subscribers watching, you already know about Pharaoh Ball and their cheekiness when it comes to revealing details about their paint colors. Light reflectance value is one of these details that they never seem to mention. Lightning quick explanation here, LR V or light reflectance value. To put it simply, is a zero to 100 lightness scale. It basically tells us how much light the color is reflecting, which will translate to how light it will look in our home. Pretty much every other paint company tells us this, except Ferron Ball. So if I were to guess Off-White's magic number, I would maybe put it around 70. 70 is pretty light, objectively speaking. In fact, I would even say that it's more of a light color rather than a true mid-tone. And that tells me it's gonna feel pretty nice to use in interior projects. I think more people are scared to use darker colors generally rather than lighter ones. And I think Off-White isn't going to give you nightmares because it's too dark. I'm gonna throw up a white background right here and put up Off-White next to a color called Dimps, which is a paint color that I use on trim from time to time. Not a huge difference in lightness to be fair. To me, Off-White has a timeless appeal, and I would hope it would with that straightforward name it has. And I feel that because of its warmer leaning undertone. It has this grayed out yellow quality to it, and that is a combination of colors that has still stood the test of time. You can call it a variation of grayish, which even with the recent heat that warm gray is getting, it still seems to be one of the more popular color categories in general. Yes, there are gonna be people that just wanna go the opposite way and pick cold colors and cold grays or pick something more vibrant and out there. But I think more often than not, colors like off-white are going to continue to be popular. And that's because they can act as a bit of a safety net for your design. They're neutral, but they can also help create and promote a warm and pleasant home feeling at the same time. Off-white also looks awesome with natural wood. So if you have a lot of that, you're laughing. Let's get into some color pairings because even though you can conceivably use off-white throughout your entire home, variety is the spice of life after all. So I wanna start things off with James White as the first pairing, which is one of my favorite off-whites by Ferron Ball. What makes it unique is it purposely leans into a green undertone, almost to the point where you can label it as a very light muted warm green. It coordinates with off-white really nicely, which will in turn look even more neutral while still having some richness. But James White has the ability to give any room a really unique, fresh feel while still keeping it nice and airy. Also, best name. Perpex Stone is a mid-tone paint color that brings some earthiness to this palette. And while Off-White has more of a clear yellow warmth, Perpex Stone feels more like a mid-tone taupe that combines gray and brown, maybe has a dash of green peeking through as well. And that allows it to coordinate with James White really nicely. At the end of the day, this color fills your mid-tone color quota, or at least it gives you something that's dark enough to be noticed, but light enough to be used in more than one part of your home, potentially. Treron is a bit of a subtle accent color, but it's an accent nonetheless. It's the darkest color we're talking about today, and it's a more robust gray green that has a dusty quality to it. It's not overly rich and vibrant, but it may seem that way next to some of the other neutral colors in this video. This palette so far is pretty conservative and I think it'll serve a lot of people because we're not really pushing the envelope too much compared to some other color palettes we've discussed on this channel. And if you do like color palettes, don't forget to subscribe and keep watching because we do a lot of these videos every single week. But before you grab your paint roller and start going, you're gonna need some trim color options for those baseboards and doors. And pointing is one of my favorites for a light option. It's soft, warm, and elegant, and will really bring some lovely vibrancy to all of your woodwork. And I think it'll show really nicely. If you want a darker trim as an option for maybe one room or the whole house, I love light gray as a choice. What's awesome is it's actually a little more brown than gray to me, but it also has a dash of green in its undertone, 
which unlocks its potential to pair it pretty nicely with all four of the other colors in this palette. Here's the palette all together. There's a good chance that these colors will look awesome in your home, but this is all dependent on your personal taste. So always test your colors out before you commit to anything. See you on the next video.